Hello everyone, back to the day, second video. So we're already on Jam A Friday, that video is here on the homepage. Just scroll down the page a little bit and it's above the pond account. It takes you into the first week of June. So high pressure is going to be coming back if the long range update is right. The Japanese and CFS beauty models are very keen to start building high pressure back in the second half of the month. Uh, potentially bring us back to a spell of warmer and drier weather for the end of the month. Uh, I may have been a question mark about early June, but I'll let you have a look at Jeremy for a second. You think to that uh, after you're done with this video. So this video will be extending out uh, sort of into the week's 10 day uh, time frame. So it's in a more reliable uh, time frame. We will see if there is any sign within the next week's 10 days of uh, high pressure. Uh, returning, so that's what we're going to be doing for today's second video. At the end, stick around to the end because we've got a little bit on the summer uh, with a long range of model. But uh, before I get on with all of that, just to talk about the Arctic Oscillation. So that's on the move. Um, this is the Arctic Oscillation observed and forecast chart. The black line here tells where we've been with the Arctic Oscillations. The red line's at the end where the GFS ensembles are forecasting the Arctic Oscillation to go. Remember, it's just an index that's reflecting the state of the atmosphere, it's not driving anything just tells you what the atmosphere over the Arctic is doing. So we've been very positive with the Arctic Oscillation really since the end of April and into early May. Been up in that sort of level with the AO. Real positivity. We are at a lower level now, but we are still in very positive territory overall with the Arctic Oscillation. But the Jefferson ensembles are forecasting this to slip down to neutral, possibly go a little bit negative, uh, actually, as we go into the second half of uh, May. Towards the end of the month, that's this period just here, may be signs of returning to positivity, but it certainly looks like we're going into a more negative phase of the Arctic Oscillation compared to what we've been in at any time, really, since uh, around the early part of April. So that's a little bit at odds with the idea that uh, we're going to get turn things warmer and drier uh, at the end uh, or in the second half of the month, because a negative Arctic Oscillation, high pressure over the Arctic, at this point of year would tend to be associated with low pressure underneath it, uh, and that low pressure can often be uh, in the Atlantic and around Northern and Western Europe. So it's a little bit at odds with the idea of building high pressure in for the second half of the month. But it does look as though it's only a short period uh, around the middle of the month, that's 16th. Uh, it's just a short period of negativity. I mean, as I say, maybe a recovery in the Arctic Constellation through the final sort of 10 days, perhaps, of uh, May. And that would be more in line with what you'd expect to see uh, if we're going to get another build of high pressure from the Azores. This is a North Atlantic Oscillation. Now, this has really been very positive indeed uh, just recently. It's just been up there um, where the black line is. Remember, again, this just an index that's reflecting the state of the atmosphere this time in the North Atlantic as opposed to the Arctic. It's not driving anything, just telling us what the pattern has been doing in uh, the North Atlantic uh, over the past few months. So very positive still with the uh, NAO. Uh, and we find, however, that the Jeff Sobbles, again, they're forecasting the NAO to drop down, at least going closer to neutral, maybe into it going a little bit negative. But uh, let's say we're going down towards neutral uh, with the NAO into the middle and second half of May. And again, that is a little bit at odds with the idea of building in high pressure uh, from the Azores. So when we had that very warm spell uh, earlier on in the month, back around last weekend, the, uh, the NAO was up there in very, very positive territory. And that's because the Azores high was really strengthened and it's pushing a ridge into the country. And uh, so that's why I had that very warm bank holiday weekend. So we've got the Arctic Oscillation and the North Atlantic Oscillation both going down, let's say, to neutral, possibly into it going a little bit negative around the middle of May. That's a bit at odds with the idea that uh, we're going to get another ridge from the Azores and turn it warmer in the second half of the month. But it does look as though, again, similar to the uh, Arctic Station, as we go through to the final 10 days, weeks 10 days of May, we may well see uh, the AO and the NEO going back to positive territory again. 
Uh, so maybe that's when the Azores High will uh, make its move. GFS temperature and precipitation on summer something like this. The red line here is a 30-year upper air temperature average. We're looking at London today. Uh, for this time of year. So we find that uh, for the next week anyway, up to around 19th of May, it looks like we're sort of neutral um, or sort of average to slightly cooler than average, if anything, with the uh, upper air temperatures. A little bit warmer just there for a few days. That's early next week. But overall, I think the next week or the coming week, let's say, it's seven Eight days looks as though it's broadly uh, on the cooler than average side. But then you see the second half of the ensemble, and that's that period just there. It is extended, so it's unreliable. But in the second half of the ensemble, we see temperatures warming up, uh, going above the red line with the upper air temperatures. So becoming uh, warmer through that final week to 10 days is still the hint within uh, GFS output. Fast precipitation is concerned. Uh, for London, so have got some rainfall spikes coming through uh, occasionally, but again, you wouldn't say that's a particularly wet ensemble by any means, so relatively uh, dry, but also at times changeable, and cool for the next week, and then perhaps warmer uh, for the second week, that's what the ensemble data seems to be pointing us towards. Temperature anomalies look like that, so a little bit cooler than average from the 11th through to the 19th of May for the UK and for Ireland too. Precipitation anomalies a little bit drier than average, so quite an unusual combination of being cool and relatively dry uh, in the week ahead. That's how the GFS is looking for Tuesday, so on Tuesday we have got a little bit of a ridge building up from the Azores High, so early next week we'll turn a bit warmer and uh, dry. It doesn't last all that long. Through the middle of next week, it's more unsettled, particularly for northern parts of the country. In the south, uh, under this very slight sort of wheat ridge, it's drier there, but it is more unsettled up in the north through the middle and second half of next week. By the end of next week, the GFS wants to extend that more unsettled weather right the way uh, through the country. That takes up to next weekend, which is the 19th, 20th of May. Still looking relatively unsettled, particularly so for the north and west, the south. And the southeast having a decent amount of dry weather. Go up to day 10, that's how we look, Monday 21st of May. High pressure is across France, so it's trying to ridge in, uh, but still a little bit on the unsettled side, particularly so for the north and for the west. But in the more extended range, we saw it on the ensemble, we do get this very nice build of pressure. Uh, building up from the Azores High. So that's how we're looking by Wednesday, the 23rd of May. So a long way out, it's 300 hours away, but high pressure is firmly back in charge as we run up towards the bank holiday weekend. By the way, spring, uh, bank holiday, late spring, bank holiday weekend uh, updates will begin at Gaza this weekend. By the time we run up to the bank holiday weekend, this is Friday 25th of May, just before the long weekend, we find the high pressure is centred over Germany. We're pulling up a very warm, southerly, if not hot, southerly to south easy wind. So big changes there, going back to high pressure through that final week uh, or so of May with the GFS. ECBF looks like that. So again, early next week, we're under this ridge. It looks relatively uh, settled and quite warm too. But by Wednesday, we turn winds back into the north and northwest again, so it becomes cooler and more unsettled. Uh, running into the second half next week, so high pressure remains influential to the south. It is more unsettled, though, up to the north and to the west. So a bit of a north-south split setting up from the second half of next week into the weekend of 19th, 20th of May. Looks like it's turning more generally unsettled across the country and actually quite wet and windy across the north and the west of the country. That's how we look by day 10, Monday, 21st of May. Unsettled for the north, possibly trying to get a bit of a ridge going down to our south. Remember, the GFS doesn't really build high pressure in till a couple of days after that. So maybe that would go in the same direction as the GFS if we could look at it. We can't you know, go up to day 10 uh, with that model. Um, but they look relatively changeable uh, up to uh, day 10 
anyway. So we're still focusing on this idea of a relatively changeable middle phase of May, and then possibly we're still looking at that build of pressure, uh, bring warmer and drier weather back for the final sort of week to 10 days of May. Finally, I'll just finish off uh, with this. So the Beijing Climate Centre long-range season model has updated uh, for May uh, overnight. And uh, this is what it's doing now. If you've been keeping an eye on the gas weather, well, these seasonal model roundups for the summer, you'll know that the Beijing Climate Centre in those updates has always been one of the cooler and more unsettled long-range models uh, for the summer. Now it's flipped a little bit, and this is the 200 millibar height anomaly for the summer of 2018. And it wants to build this big ridge through the country from the Atlantic and extend it over towards Europe. The jet stream will be pushed off to our north. And so that would be, it's a very settled looking chart and potentially a very warm or even a hot summer could be the result of that. Uh, this is the temperature anomaly for this summer from the Beijing Climate Centre. Notice most parts of the UK are now forecast to have a, a significantly warmer than average summer, as is the vast majority of Europe as well. Uh, the only question I've got to have about that is that the whole of Europe is coming out warmer than average and the highest temperature anomalies to average look as though they're in the east and the southeast of Europe um, and when you get the highest temperature anomalies to average in the east and the southeast of Europe the way that the weather balances itself out because they always say weather is always looking for balance it's always looking for an equilibrium but it can never find it so when the east and the southeast of Europe is very hot normally the north and the west of Europe will be colder, or in case some are cooler. Um, the reverse is true, of course, when it's warmest in the north and the west of Europe, it will typically be coolest in the east and the southeast of Europe. So very unusual to have the whole of Europe looking very warm, uh, and the UK and Ireland, uh, and also Scandinavia, to be as warm as that when it is as hot as that being forecast in the east southeast of Europe. So that's a little bit strange. But anyway, we'll go with that and say that uh, Beijing Climate Centre is forecasting a significantly warmer than average summer under a lot of high pressure. And so also the precipitation anomaly for this summer is now looking very dry. This is a real flip on what the Beijing Climate Centre has been showing recently uh, for this summer. So the UK now coming out with a very dry summer, as is much of uh, Central and Northern Europe. So dramatic changes for this summer with the Beijing Climate Centre. We will be doing the um, final seasonal model roundup uh, for the summer on the final Saturday of the month. So I think that's the 26th of uh, May, just before we release the GazWebbies.com uh, summer 2018 forecast, but next day, Sunday, the 27th. So if that is how a lot of the long-range models are going this month, and I don't know if it is because most of the long-range models haven't yet updated for May. They will update over the next few days and next week or so. But if that's going to be the trend that we see within the long-range output, then that'll be quite interesting because it does suggest they might be starting to pick up on a, on a different route uh, that we may go down uh, for this summer. Because up to now, it's looked like it's going to be a relatively changeable and quite cool summer from the long-range models. So um, it'll be interesting to see how that plays out anyway. But I thought I'd throw that in because it is a big, big flip from the Beijing Climate Centre this summer and what it's been showing uh, recently. Let's come back to the next week to 10 days. So uh, we're still playing with this idea we've been looking at for several days, unsettled uh, and changeable, let's say, not a washout, but changeable conditions from now through to next weekend. Then we're looking at uh, will we get this build of pressure from the Azores? Will we turn it warmer and drier through the final uh, sort of week or so of May? That will be the question that we'll be trying to answer in the updates over the next few days. 
Tomorrow we've got weekend forecast, and on Saturday, on Sunday, we'll have some more summer analogues. We'll have Gazma Bid Sunday Brown. I say this weekend we will be starting our next countdown uh, to Bank Holiday Weekend. We've only just finished with the last one, but we'll be counting down to the late spring Bank Holiday Weekend uh, from this weekend. So come back for all the updates, but that's all for now, and thanks for watching.